I had just turned, I think, 15 at the time, and by the time I was ready to turn 16, I was in this business. And you started off with carnival wrestling? Yes. What was in the old school carnival like? That's where they developed the Connie language out of it and so on and so forth. You would go That's from city the, to city, carnival to carnival? Well, actually, they would move uh, not city to city because uh, in the state of Missouri, they, this time of year, they probably got 15 of them going on mm -hmm. right now. And same in Iowa, same in Illinois. Uh, but when you're there, you're taking on all comers uh, coming in and out of the audience. So you better know a little bit about what you're talking about. Because you darn sure don't get paid when you get beat. And in that part of the country, there's a lot of kids know all there is to know about amateur wrestling. So you learn a few things that you can pass someone out or make them tap out real quick. Or you get your butt kicked and you don't get paid. Now, were you the actual wrestler in the ring issuing the open challenge, quote-unquote, to the audience, or were you the plan? Both ways. Both ways. Both ways. How did, you did a lot of farming being out in the Midwest after you left school, how did your work in farming lead you to meet the Zabiscos that got you involved in the wrestling? Well, I planted their uh, crops one year and harvested them, and by that time I met Gus Karras, who was only like a, uh, less than 20 miles away in St. Joe, and thank God for that, it got me away from two guys that would hurt me just to keep me working for them. And, but from where I went from there to the things I've been able to do throughout the world, I got a total view of the whole world. I had 